Very good. Awesome. Well, I see, uh, I see a few familiar faces in the room today, and so uh, it's awesome to have you guys here. Um, what, what I'll do first is I'll take just a little bit of time uh, to, uh, to kind of set things up, and then I'm going to turn it over to Mary to kind of get her thoughts, because I'll, I'll be honest with you, I, I kind of I dragged Mary into this when she was uh, in Ogallala working with the Economic Development Group. I said, I said you, we have to get involved in this at this point. Um, Lake McConaughey is a huge driver of economic development for Keith County and the region there. And the issues that we were seeing and we were having at Lake McConaughey were, uh, were needing to be resolved. And the only way that we could see to do that was to bring people together to talk about what their needs were and what the solutions could be. So I'd like to thank everyone for coming here today and inviting us to speak. We really, we really appreciate it. Um, as you know, Lake McConaughey is Nebraska's largest reservoir. And uh, since its uh, construction in 1941 has seen uh, many issues, especially pertaining to the recreation part that was there and, and how, to, uh, how to maintain that in a safe and, and, uh, and a fun experience for those people that are visiting. Um, and most of that has come from not just the underestimation of how popular the, uh, the attraction is, but then also about how many different uh, stakeholders are involved and really what their roles were and are and what they should be moving into the future. And that is, that's, that's the impetus of what we want to talk about today and how we've come from uh, a lake where nobody really communicated about what was going on, everybody just kind of sniped back and forth, to one where there's now a collaborative response to, uh, and a collaborative planning and communication that happens that, uh, that looks to move all the interests that uh, are around Lake McConaughey forward. So um, with that, I will uh, turn it over to Mary to get her first thoughts and then we'll move into the presentation itself. Absolutely, thank you so much, Ken, great intro. Um, so when Ken talks about, he kind of drug me along into this, he's exactly right. Um, <laughs> um, but here we are um, a little over two years later and we are really reaping some some um, positive benefits from this collaboration piece that Ken touched on, and um, a lot of a lot of times, economic development agencies question, you know, what is our role in the community? How do we support um, big projects like this, Lake McConaughey? Um, this thing is it's so complex. Um, I'm learning new things every day, but really, what what we have done through Keith County Area Development is acted as that facilitator, um, that convener, that um, that instrument that brings brings those people together to have these collaborative conversations. And as Ken will share as we move through the presentation, we've really seen some great results in a short amount of time. So, Ken, go right ahead. Great. Well, thanks, Mary. And you know, as as we look at Lake McConaughey, where it sits in Nebraska, um, where it sits uh, in the United States. Um, it covers about 30,000 acres that, uh, that, were, that were set aside for the impoundment. It holds, when it's full capacity, about 1.7 million acre feet, which provides irrigation, recreation, endangered species mitigation, um, all sorts of fisheries, uh, wildlife habitat. I mean, you just go down the list of, of anything that a, that a water impoundment can do, and Lake McConaughey has all that. Birding, I mean, 300 species of birds that, that land there every year. The bald eagle numbers are incredible anymore. It's just amazing to see everything that goes on out there. And as we, as we move through this and as we look at what, uh, what matters at Lake McConaughey to not only, not only the people that live there, but the people that, uh, that um, need this water for their farms, the people that uh, rely upon this habitat for birds, for hunting, for fishing, and all this. How do you bring all those folks together into a room and, uh, and get them to agree on stuff? And that's, uh, that, that, was, that was one of the hard part. Of course, we all know it was built in, in the 40s uh, to provide irrigation water for, for the projects in central Nebraska. And, uh, and that project has paid has paid Nebraska, I mean, just probably billions and billions of dollars. And, and it's given us a real opportunity to, uh, to learn how to manage water in the state of Nebraska and how to, uh, how, to, how to use this water to the best of its ability to its highest and best use. So I think that's, uh, I think that's extremely important to understand. And I think, ooh, let's, uh, let's back this up a second. Sorry about that. Somewhere here. My papers are getting all over. Okay, start over here. So as you can see, one of the things that we deal with uh, is our location. 
Uh, we're two and a half hours away from uh, the front range of Denver, which uh, provides for literally millions of people to have an opportunity to come visit the lake. And if you look at what, uh, at what uh, recreation costs in, uh, in Colorado compared to Nebraska, uh, Lake McConaughey to this point has been a very value uh, spend for those folks coming out of Colorado. So it's, a, it's, it's an extremely important uh, recreation opportunity for those on the Front Range. And those folks on the Front Range are extremely important to the economy in Keith County and what goes on at Lake McConaughey. So um, we're, uh, we like our Colorado friends. Um, we just, uh, we're on the very cusp now of trying to figure out how to get them to come to Lake McConaughey and leave more of their hard-earned money before they go home. Um, you know, this is one of the things that, uh, that Lake McConaughey is noticed for. Um, Midwest living the best beaches of the mid coast. And that picture right there is on the shores of Lake McConaughey. So, I mean, if you're wondering, and this is, this is one of those uh, regional magazines that's getting out to uh, 100,000 uh, people or whatever with their subscription rates. So, um, folks are taking notice of Lake McConaughey. Uh, the numbers are continuing to go up. I think it's important to note that uh, in um, 2020, when, uh, when all that happened, we, we'll have some stuff on that. But uh, Ogallala and Keith County, because I believe of the lake, uh, saw some really interesting numbers that, uh, that, you, wouldn't, uh, that you wouldn't really expect to see during, during the pandemic. Like I said, as we look at things, I mean, you could just, I mean, this is beautiful stuff. I mean, you can't, you can't beat it as far as that. I remember when I was running for office, and I always, I always told people this. I said, there aren't many people in the state of Nebraska that grew up as beach bums but I had the opportunity to do it, and I took full advantage of it, trust me. So <laughs> that was kind of my uh, full disclosure type of thing. Hey, I wasn't a perfect guy, but uh, nobody ever asked me what that really meant, so I never told them. Um, but like I said before, uh, Lake McConaughey, if you look at the whole and how that's governed and what, what goes into that, has many, many stakeholders. Obviously, it's owned by Central Nebraska Public Power and Irrigation District, who then, uh, who then gives the management of that over to Gaiman Parks. Uh, the lake sits within Keith County and the city of Ogallala is basically the gateway to, uh, to Lake McConaughey. So those, those are the basic, oh, and you've got the state of Nebraska that, uh, that is there that uh, kind of overlords the whole thing or supposedly so. And so as you look at that and you start to figure out, oh, and we forgot, we also, have, uh, we also have FERC that we get to deal with and have fun with as well. So as you look at that and you see all the layers of, their, of, of the management that is there, you have to start to ask yourself, okay, once again, and this is, this is some of the problems that we had because a lot of the folks that, uh, that were in and around Keith County, when they saw Lake McConaughey, they, they didn't know how to, how to approach um, trying to get anything done because they, they, they perceived that it was a top-down sort of approach that was going on. They perceived that, uh, that there was really no way for them to have any say in, in what could happen with the management of that lake. So what they did for the first 15, 20, 30 years was it would go along for a while and then the folks from the county would, would raise a ruckus and go to Gaiman Parks and jump up and down and holler about uh, issues that were going on, mostly overcrowding, mostly uh, you know crime that wasn't being taken care of. And then after a while, when it got bad enough, then either the state, Game and Parks, or everybody uh, in between would, would crack down on it. And I think, I don't know if anybody here is familiar with what happened with the, what they called the Big Mac attack, which is back in the early 90s. Um, they, they cracked down very hard on, um, visitors to the lake and the crime that was going on out there made thousands of arrests that weekend. Um, unfortunately, when that happened, it didn't just affect the folks that were, uh, that, that were breaking the law and things like that. It affected numbers for quite a few years after that to where people were like, well, you know, we really don't want to go back there because they don't really want us there. And so we didn't want to get back into that same situation. But in, 2000, in 2019, this happened again. And the county folks said, hey, Game of Parks, we want you to come out and we want you to explain how this is going to get fixed in 2019. So they started to come out and they sat down. And of course, it was the same thing back and forth. How are you going to fix this? What are you going to do? And everybody was just like, okay, 
so back to Lincoln, everybody went. And at that time, at that time, I was uh, I was uh, lobbying for Nebraska strategies. So that I saw this was was starting to happen and was starting to uh, become an issue. And I I mentioned to uh, the folks at Keith County Area Development and and others that hey. This is, uh, this is a little bigger deal than, than what you might think. We need to be really, really careful about how we move forward with this because I, I don't believe that Gaming Parks is really going to be very happy uh, about being called out without, uh, without being talked to and, and without working with them in the first place. And needless to say, on the first day of the legislature of 2020, I believe it was, or 2019, it, it, I start to lose track of time. Uh, Senator Hughes, who was chair of the Natural Resources Committee at the time, got on the floor of the legislature and said that he had friends from McCook that had come to McConaughey and had stayed on the beach and had stayed overnight and woke up the next day and were afraid for their lives. And that was on the mic. That is forever in the transcripts of the Nebraska legislature. And that's, at the, that's the point, and, and Mary can tell you more what that was like, when I, when I uh, contacted them and I said, hey guys, w you guys need to do something, otherwise this thing is going to get out of control and, uh, and you, won't, uh, you, you won't be able to keep up with what's going to happen. And so that's when Mary went to, uh, went to her folks and I'll turn it over to you, Mary, to uh, kind of explain how that, uh, how that scenario went down and, and what that process was like. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna turn my mic off again, sorry guys. Hello, everybody. Are you there? We can hear you. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Um, so, process um, 2019. Hmm. Um, I want to get this right. Rachel, how's that? Okay. I can keep going. We can. We'll get back to that. Yeah, we've got a we've got a bad echo. Can you go ahead? I'm going to see what I can. Okay. Figure out here. Sorry. So I can tell you this: uh, it, it, it wasn't an e it wasn't an easy thing to get everybody on board. Um, people were were really concerned, but but we worked things out. I, I I made it a point at that time because I knew that we had to. We can move here. Here's here's basically the stakeholders that we talked about. We had to move, we had to move pretty quickly to get things done. And par and part of the reason was is because Game and Parks was, I mean they were they were literally fed up with with everything that had gone on out there. And, and they weren't the only ones. I mean, it, everybody was frustrated. So needless to say that those, some of those first um, interactions and communications between uh, myself and folks at Game and Parks and some of the commissioners was, was a little bit tense. And we were, we were pretty concerned about that because, um, because as, you can, as you can imagine, uh, it, it really, really, really does mean a lot for um, the Keith County community as far as economic development. And, uh, and we, we need all those dollars coming in. Um, there's reasons for that. When you, when you, take, when you take an area that's 30,000 acres, right, and you take those and, and you put it into, uh, into a thing like Lake McConaughey and, and then there's no taxes being, uh, being drawn off of that, we have to make those taxes up somehow. And the, and the way that we do that is with recreation. And so anything that looks to hinder the ability of folks to recreate around Lake McConaughey is a concern for the folks of Keith County. So uh, through, through some talks and negotiations, we were able to get uh, the commissioners to agree to allow uh, Mary to come speak in front of Game and Parks Commission to talk about what we wanted to do and how we wanted to move forward and bring everyone together to sit down and figure out once and for all how to conduct and create a management scenario to where there was communication between all parties and people understood what was happening to find a better path for Lake McConaughey. And, um, and Mary, I think, uh, I think there's, no, there's no doubt she was successful in that and was able to, uh, to get us to the point where uh, the Lake McConaughey Advisory Committee which was first created in 2014 when uh, Game and Parks decided to do their uh, Lake McConaughey 20-year master plan. And that was, in, like I said, 2014. And that committee was put together and used to be the sounding board for, um, for the uh, changes that the Game and Parks wanted to see in the master plan. And we looked at that and we said, you know what, this is a perfect opportunity to bring that group back, reconstitute it, to use it for, for this, uh, 
for this kind of thing. And so, and so with that, I, I kind of talked to Mary, and she was tasked with, uh, with taking care of uh, trying to put that back together. And, and I'll kind of let her talk about uh, the kind of folks that uh, she decided should be included in that group and, and why they were brought on board. Sure. Let's hope we fixed our echo problem here. Um, so as, as Ken alluded to, it was um, early in 2020 when uh, Game and Parks kind of shared this, um, I'm gonna say dropped a bomb on, on our community and it really forced us to look at Lake McConaughey as um, approach it differently as it has been in the past. Um, we, we realize that this is a, an asset to our community and how can we all work together to capitalize on this asset instead of, um, instead of sitting back and, and letting Game and Parks lead and, and us follow, how, how can we be involved and, and how can we come to the table with, with great ideas and, and support them in, in managing Lake McConaughey. Um, and so with Ken's help with Nebraska Strategies help which we greatly appreciate and to this day um, are, are thankful that we took the leap of faith. Um, we were able to organize, resurrect the um, Lake McConaughey Advisory Committee. Um, we wanted to make sure that we had representatives from our, our city and county, um, that we had local business representation. Um, we had tourism representation um, from our local chamber of commerce, our visitor committee. Um, and other stakeholders um, in the community from our um, Keith County Foundation Fund, um, our law enforcement representatives from Ogallala um, City Police Department, the county sheriffs and, and the state patrol. Um, also legal, we had our Keith County attorney um, available as, as he's well versed um, with the events at Lake McConaughey. And so just bringing all of that knowledge um, around the table from a Keith a Keith County perspective and being able to have those conversations um, with Game and Parks, uh, with, with the leadership there, with the leadership from Central, it's really opened the door for us to continue to move the needle and see success um, as, as we make changes and as we try to capitalize on this great resource. So, Ken? Yeah, great. Yeah. yeah, and so and so as we look at, as we look at um, as we look at the, the advisory group from before to now and the things that we were able to accomplish. So what we did with the advisory group was we, we decided that we needed to start having meetings. First of all, just to get everything out on the table as to what Game and Parks needed for, uh, for, for their um, success to move forward, what the community needed to be able to do, and then how we could work together um, and maybe not all of it happens within the park itself. Maybe there's maybe there's other places that we can utilize and and uh, and create some of the some of the amenities and things that we needed. So so that's the path that we started down. And the first thing the first thing that we uh, that we decided was, hey, look, um, if if we're going to have all these visitors from Colorado, and and that is taxing the system that we have, then let's make sure that the folks that are from out of state are are paying what they need to pay to take care of their visitation here. So we introduced LB 336, which Senator Hughes introduced, which raised the out-of-state visitor um, sticker. Um, it basically doubled the price from, I think it was $30 to $60. And so, and so that, should, that should alleviate and help bring in some revenue to uh, give Game and Parks some more opportunities there at the lake. It's, it's an interesting fact that about 40 to 50% of all the out-of-state um, entry permits that are bought within the state of Nebraska are bought within a 40 mile radius of Lake McConaughey. So if you wonder where people are going to visit, um, when they come to Nebraska and they wanna go to a game of, a game of parks uh, facility, um, if they're coming from out of state and most of those folks are coming from Colorado, uh, a lot of them are going to McConaughey. So, and we, like I said before, we, uh, we greatly, greatly appreciate that. Um, one of the other things that we've worked extremely hard on and when we're still, we're still continuing to work on, but we're, we're, we're super excited about are uh, a new kind of a concessionaires agreement that will allow some of the concessionaires that are around the lake and um, to allow them to utilize the beach area in front of their concession. And one of the, th one of the things that that does is you have to understand that Lake McConaughey has about uh, 105 miles of shoreline all the way around. It's a massive lake, it's, it's huge. And 
Game and parks, uh, realistically, cannot uh, patrol the whole lake. It's just almost impossible. So, so one of the things that we talked about, one of the ways to increase um, local economic development while then also decreasing the need for game and parks to patrol, the game and parks to do things like that, is to set up concessionaire agreements to allow those folks that, uh, that have the concessionaires and have done a good job, they're good actors, um, to be able to, uh, to control those beach areas. And when we say control those areas, that's what we mean. They have to, they have, to be, have the security down there, they have to make sure they have uh, everything so that it's safe, that they're not uh, allowing folks to, uh, to do things that are, that are unsafe. And so, and so with that, uh, Game and Parks um, has been working on that, and I know that uh, Central has been involved in that as well. I'm not sure that we're completely there yet, but I know that uh, I, I think we're getting closer every day. And I can tell you this, that uh, when those concessionaire agreements were agreed to and were, uh, were moved forward upon, um, that changed the whole calculus. Because at that point, at that point, the locals knew that, uh, that Game of Parks really did want to solve some of the problems, and they were willing to look to the locals to be able to help that. And for Keith County and, and our economic development opportunities there, um, there's no better way to do it than to have private business able to, uh, to operate that there. Um, you know, they're still going to pay their uh, park permits because they've got to they gotta get on the park that way. But, uh, but overall, it, it'll be a much better, much better scenario, we believe, for both game and parks and how they, uh, how they manage that as well as um, uh, how, they, uh, how they then are able to uh, patrol the lake and, and keep, keep, uh, keep things where they need to be. Um, obviously, the communication that has happened has been, has been huge. Um, we meet probably, during, during session, it's not quite as often, but uh, we had a meeting in February, and we'll have another Lake Advisory meeting in April. And we, we talk about all sorts of things, about capital improvements that are happening at McConaughey by Game and Parks. Um, we talk about uh, uh, private camping uh, facilities that have been built around the lake, not on lake property per se. But we've had about 300 to 400 new campground sites that have been created within the county that are not in the park specifically. And that's, that's a big help, too, to, to get people there to, that, so they know that they don't necessarily have to stay at Lake McConaughey. But, uh, but there's a private uh, person there that's, uh, that's making a little money off of that. And so I think that, I think that that's a huge, uh, huge opportunity for both the county, uh, Game and Parks, and, and for those folks that uh, want to be in the hospitality business um, here in Nebraska. Um, mm -hmm. Go ahead, Mary. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, when, when we talk about how, how all of this came about, um, we were looking at addressing the, the camp anywhere man mentality, right, at Lake McConaughey. That's where a lot of these issues were arising. Um, we didn't have reservations um, as other parks do um, in our neighboring states. You know, people can show up and literally camp outside your front door um, while you're sleeping. That's, we've heard many stories of, of that happening. Um, and so how can we mitigate that, mitigate the negative impacts of that? And this whole process has really um, forced us to um, be creative, um, to think outside the box, and how do, we, how do we capitalize on this resource? How do we make sure that we're providing those memorable experiences for our visitors of all ages um, and from um, diverse backgrounds? How do we increase our visitation during this the shoulder seasons, um, which is something that we did see an increase in last year. Um, even camping during the week last year, um, we, we saw a big increase. Um, how, how do we explore partnerships um, with our surrounding areas? Um, and how can we bridge the gap between Lake McConaughey and the city of Ogallala? Um, I think before, um, before this happened in 2020, things were very separate. Um, it was, you're either at the lake or you're in Ogallala. Um, and now we, we've become a destination. Um, Keith, the Keith County community has become a destination and businesses are really um, looking at ways to capitalize on that, um, be diverse and um, change their marketing strategies, um, 
and, and different offerings that way. Um, how an, another big focus is Ken mentioned, how do we ensure public safety? Uh, make sure that everyone's taken care of. Something that's um, come out of these conversations, our county is upgrading their communication system. Um, prior to, well, they, they still can't all communicate, but we're working on that. So our county um, police department, our county sheriff, our Oglala City Police Department, um, Game and Parks um, Enforcement and State Patrol, they can't communicate on a radio system when they're out there. And when you're talking about covering Lake McConaughey and providing um, emergency response out there, that's pretty difficult. Um, especially if you're on foot, you're you're looking for people in, in trees, um, things of that nature. And so we're working to address that. Um, but having this camping reservation system, as you guys um, see on the screen now, that's really helped to track our visitors, to know where our visitors are. Um, and that has um, helped with the, the public safety piece that, that we wanted to focus on. Um, how do we increase revenue generation? I believe Game and Parks has seen an increase there. Uh, we're able to collect um, more camping fees because you register online um, and pay ahead of time. Um, we don't have to send people out to, to find you to pay your camping fee. Um, so a great plus there. Um, and then how, how do we manage everything in between, like Ken was talking about, like the concessionaire piece? How, how can we continue to generate more revenue, continue to see a positive impact in our economy, but support private private business development out there, um, and the the new concessionaire agreements. Those opportunities are, are going to be really great for our local economy. Um, as Ken mentioned earlier, some interesting numbers um, that we believe were driven by by the fact that we have Lake McConaughey um, in 2019. Um, the city of Ogallala saw a net taxable sales number of a little over $104 million. In 2020, so COVID year 2020, we saw um, an increase in 2.6% in net taxable sales, which is huge for 2020. Um, we, are, we haven't received our numbers for November, December yet um, for 2021, but we're on track to exceed our 2020 numbers. So we are, our sales tax um, revenues are increasing, which is um, wonderful. Um, thankful for that resource that we have. Also our lodging tax dollars in 2020, um, the rest of the state did not see an increase, right? Um, but Keith County, we saw a one and a half percent increase compared to 30% drops elsewhere across the state of Nebraska. And so, so seeing that, understanding this really helped um, others understand what a great resource this is and how we need to make sure that we are protecting it and we're doing what we can to capitalize on this economic opportunity um, as Nebraska Strategies has helped lead us to, to other opportunities out there. And Ken, I'll let you kind of touch on the 1023 part. Sure. That's probably a good segue there. Sure, and I, and I also want to re reiterate that uh that when, when the local folks first heard about uh, a reservation system being put in place, uh, you would have thought the sky was falling. <coughs> there you go. Not quite, but almost. Um, but it was really interesting uh, how, that, uh, how that evolved and transformed. Um, because once, once it finally got put into place and people saw um, what a reservation system can do, not only to make sure that the revenues are coming in the way they're supposed to, but now you know who's there and where they're at. And literally overnight, it basically changed the whole tenor of the attitude of that lake during those big weekends. All of a sudden, there was, there was areas for law enforcement to get down and be amongst the people. So instead of, you know, just running from one... Uh, one crisis to the next, they were able to, you know, do some, do some fishing, you know, stuff like, like giving people tickets for, for fishing violations, which hardly ever happened out there because they were always too worried about, you know, um, alcohol issues and uh, abuse issues and, and things like that. So, so once the reservation system got put in place, 
Uh, and, and once the, the, the local folks saw the benefits of that, I think that, I think that now, um, I don't think they'd have it any other way. The other thing that it's done, like Mary said, is most of the time in the past, you would get all your visitors on the weekends. And you would get who knows how many people out there because I'm not even sure that half the people ever paid. But what, but what happened with the reservation system is now you're getting people that are paying, and if they can't be there on the weekend, well, they'll shift it to, to a weekday. And all of a sudden, we're starting to see it all kind of flow together to where there's no, not as many peaks and not as many valleys, and it's becoming much more consistent, which is a much more um, beneficial thing for local business, much more beneficial thing for staff at Game and Parks, much more beneficial thing for the community as a whole. So we really see the reservation system uh, since it's been put in place as a real game changer uh, for giving us a base and, and now being able to expand on what we're doing out there. So, so we were pretty happy about that. Now we're, we're seeing people stay longer too, um, stay longer and they're even um, splitting up their stay and they're staying for several days out of the lake and then they're coming into town and staying at, at our hotels yeah. um, because of the way that our visitor committee has really flipped the marketing um, to match what Game and Park is offering. So sorry, Ken. I no, no, that. no, that's fine. Um, all this being said, um, what, what it really did uh, with all the advancements that we've made, and I can tell you, this is this is, you know, this this 45 minutes that we're talking here has taken us um, three years to get to this point, um, to get to where we're at now. Um, but the legislature has taken notice. Um, any of you heard of the Star Wars Committee or the LB 406, or now is morphed into LB 1023? Um, well, Lake McConaughey is a is a major um, benefactor of that bill and that process. Um, the state of Nebraska is looking at spending $50 million on a possible marina and road construction as well as a welcoming structure um, that will welcome everyone to Lake McConaughey um, right there just north of Ogallala. So um, we're very appreciative to the legislators, to, uh, to the Star Wars Committee and Speaker Hilders for introducing those bills and we're excited to see where that goes in the future. Uh, so far, unless something has drastically changed today, it looks like all that is on track, um, but the legislature is still in session, so there's always a chance to have that get taken away. So um, we're, gonna, we're gonna hope and pray that it doesn't. But I think that, I think that uh, one of the things for the people of Keith County that they're now seeing is that if, if you work hard on stuff and you can collaborate and you can see stuff come together, people do take notice. And, and good things come to people that are willing to work together and work hard to make uh, certain things happen. So I think it's, uh, I think it's a, a great testament to what the folks of Keith County have been able to pull together with the folks at Game and Parks and everybody that has helped out on the, uh, on the Lake McConaughey Advisory Committee have done. But, but with that being said, there's, uh, there's still much, uh, much more that, uh, that needs to happen. And we expect that the Lake Advisory Committee is going to be an integral part in making that happen. I mean, one of the things that, uh, a few of the things that we want to talk about and what we want to do are, you know, regional development guide and plan. How do we want that lake to look and the surrounding areas to look in the next 15 to 20 years? Um, we, need, we need to talk about that because, because it's, it's real and, it, and there's development that's going on out there right now that really doesn't have any, you know, purpose. There's no... Uh, there's no master plan of what it really should look like outside of where the park is at. So we need to work on that as a community and as, uh, as the stakeholders. Um, you know, funding source for existing attractions. We've got four or five um, different, uh, what I would call like resorts that are there that have been there since like the 50s. Um, so we need to find a way to help fund those so that they can, uh, they can do some maintenance and some upkeep and some upgrading of their facilities to keep things fresh and to keep them also um, able to compete with uh, all the other stuff that may be going on here in the future. Because one of the things that we don't want to do out there is for those folks that have been there for a long time and that have, uh, and that have uh, put these uh, uh, things in place, like North Shore, like um, uh, Vans Lakeview, um, those places like that, we need to find a way to continue to upgrade what they're doing so that the, they can attract more and more people as well 
and attract more and more money so that they can, they can remain healthy as well. Because what we don't want to have around that lake are the haves and the have-nots. We'd, uh, we'd much rather make sure that everybody is staying on a certain level. So that's going to be a big initiative for us as well. Um, obviously, we, uh, with the amount of visitors that we have and the fact that uh, all of our volunteer firemen and our volunteer fire rescue folks are just that, volunteers, during the summer months, when that's going on, it can get pretty hectic. So we want to look into uh, finding some way to get some funding for a professional fire and, and rescue service during those summer months to be able to uh, give our volunteers a little bit of a break so that they don't have to be on call 24 hours a day and uh, try to do their uh, day jobs too. So, so that's one of the things that we're looking at. Um, obviously, housing is a big deal for everyone. Um, and housing for uh, Game and Parks employees and actually finding enough employees to man the park um, is, is always a, uh, um, an issue. And so we're also working on projects and programs that could help alleviate some of those uh, constraints too. And then, um, you know, those are, those are some of the things that, uh, that we've identified. Obviously, the, the list is, is somewhat um, non-exhaustive. I mean, there's, there's always things that you could do down there. And, uh, and one of the things that we saw in the, uh, in the 1023 process, and if you go out, and I think it's a play, plan, preserve, um, if you go look at that and see what, uh, see what HDR did for all the ideas for Lake McConaughey and the other areas around, there's, there's a lot of really good ideas that didn't get funded, but that would still be out there and, and be uh, available to, uh, to come out and, and create out there. So if, you know, if there's folks that want to do recreational stuff and want to be part of the hospitality industry, um, Lake McConaughey is one of those places that is uh, really starting to take off. I think, I think like Mary told you, um, Heath County was one of the few areas in 2020, uh, I believe, where uh, net sales tax actually went up. Almost all other counties in the state of Nebraska, I see, I think, I believe this, and don't mark my words completely, but saw somewhere between a 20 and 30% drop in sales tax over that time. Ogallala actually increased, and we, we truly believe that that's because of Lake McConaughey and, uh, and the fact that a lot of folks, when, when the pandemic started, we had folks that moved to Lake McConaughey from New York City because they didn't want to be in New York, so they came out and they basically... Uh, rented places for three and four months at a time just to stay there and they worked from there and everything else. The nice thing is now, even on the south side of the lake, um, because of somewhat of, because of the pandemic stuff, uh, we now have fiber that, uh, that can get you right to the shoreline on the lake. So uh, we've got pretty fast internet out there and I think uh, you've, heard of, you've heard of those, uh, what do they call them now, the Zoom communities? I think Ogallala is well on the way of becoming that. Um, the lake amenities, uh, Interstate 80, two and a half hours from Denver. Um, it, it's, a, it's a perfect setup for folks that uh, want to live someplace uh, and they can work from anywhere. And I think, uh, I think that we'll see a lot more of that out there. So, Mary, do you have anything else to... Uh... Yeah, I, I just wanted to touch on, it's interesting how um, Lake McConaughey, the image of Lake McConaughey has shifted a little bit since COVID. Um, we are still a tourism community. We are we still have that pull, but um, Lake McConaughey is now a quality of life piece too. Um, to what Ken alluded to, we have people that are moving here from across the country because they love the lake. Um, we have the assets. We have the ability to be a Zoom community, um, and so it, it increases. It, it's a positive in, in that quality of life um, column when when people are looking. Um, for a place to relocate um, after this pandemic. I think you can say after, I don't know if you can say after yet, but um, <laughs> we are, we're, we're learning as we go and, and we're starting to evolve in, in how we um, leverage this resource when, when we're talking about people attraction, business attraction as well. And so um, it's, been, it's been a great ride so far and um, we've come a long way in a short time. So I'm excited to see what's, what's to come, so. Great. I think we're ready. Are we ready for questions, Ken? Or do you have let's have questions? some. Let's find out. Let's have some questions. How about that? All right. Questions. Right over here. Behind you. Frank. 
Frank's got one. Okay. Yes, well, first of all, Ken and Mary, thank you for the presentation. Really appreciate kind of the update on what's going on. And a, a couple of questions. You indicated that uh, the game in parks is essentially doubled their park permit fee. Mm -hmm. Does that all go to game and parks or does it get spread among some of the other partners? Um, that, would, that would all go to game and parks. Um, um, but we have, in our discussions with them, they, they plan on utilizing most of that money at McConaughey. Okay, and, and the second is kind of related to that and that's uh, having been up there multiple times, the, the roads around the lake in some cases are a little bit hit and miss. Mm -hmm. Is there any mechanism or any plans to help Keith County or maybe even the private folks up, upgrade the access on maybe the south side of the lake? Sure, yeah, and actually, actually in LB 1023, there's about $8 million that is set aside exactly for um, uh, roads on the south side of the lake. And, and the county asked for that because uh, um, as more and more people disperse around the lake, uh, they need better roads to get for public safety. So, so there's about $8 million in there for that. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Sure. All right, any other questions? <coughs> Excuse me. I just wanted to ask about pollution. Mm -hmm. because, and I've only been to, I've been to Lake McConaughey one time, mm -hmm. and I was just surprised at all the pickup trucks, campers, so close to the water. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, is, there ever, is there ever a problem with like oil spills or people dumping stuff into the water? Like how do you, you know, patrol we, that? Right. And, um, and one of the things that the reservation system has given us, <coughs> excuse me, is an opportunity to know who's out there and stuff. But we've, we've never really had a huge widespread problem of like spills like that. Our biggest issues that we have are people just leaving trash on the beach. And so we've got a we've got a pretty big uh, um, cleanup crew um, in Keith, Keith County, beautiful, that comes out after the big weekends and goes <coughs> excuse me goes around and, and cleans up all those uh, all those areas like that. So so they they do uh, have some issues, but not not the kind of things where spill spills and things like that. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I know it wasn't that good, guys. I'm sure there's got to be some questions, huh? Yeah, Ken, do you want to share our contact information? Oh, can you guys yeah, hear let me? me uh, let me get to that. Oh, I yeah. got a question. I mean, maybe I missed it already, too. Um, <coughs> I was going to ask about, you know, just like boat ramps and access on the lake as well. You know, back to the south side of the lake, there's really only one true boat ramp, and that's by the dam on the south side. Is there anything in the works for uh, additional access to get on the water on the south, maybe even the north side of the lake, but primarily the south? Yeah. Um, on the north side, they're just finishing up um, a new boat ramp at Martin Bay. Um, Ken, do you remember the million dollar? Yeah, um, there were, millions it's of a, dollars that yeah it's about an $8 million project. Um, I, I think. think there's that and then some, some road stuff that they're doing on the north side. Yeah. Um, the um, south side, yeah, the south side gets a little trickier. But I do yeah. know at, uh, at Divers Bay that uh, they're working on some stuff. And somewhere, I mean, when, when, this money, when this money comes down for the 50 million and the study's done to see where the location of a marina could go, um, that, uh, that potentially could be on the south side as well, which would, uh, which would obviously help with uh, access to get on the water on the south side. But at this point, at this point there's no, um, Except for the the places that are already available now, there's there's nothing in the works right away where we'll see anything within the next year or so. There's some other questions in the chat on Zoom. Okay. And so, it, do your visitation numbers hold steady during times of low water levels? Um, what we found <coughs> what we found out is that uh, is that people like to visit no matter where the water is. Everybody loves the beach. That's, that's the thing. Um, the problem that you have is as the water level goes down, um, you actually have less shoreline than if the water stays up. And so what happens is that your capacity to have, cam to have as many campers um, gets lessened when the water goes down. And so, um, yeah, the demand is there, but, uh, but there really isn't the same type of, oh, thank you, sir, very much. But there really isn't the same uh, 
there just isn't the same ability to have access. So, so um, the, the, the interest the interest in the lake has always been there. The question is, is what the, what is the carrying capacity of that lake at certain times and certain levels? Another question is, how can people stay involved in this effort? Sure, and uh, you know that's uh, that's one of the toughest things for uh, for any volunteer group to do is how do you stay involved? How do you uh, make sure that you're um, keeping up with what you need to? And I think the best way to do it is exactly like we've done. Um, the Lake McConaughey Advisory Group doesn't have a set membership per se. There's, there's a lot of the same people that are at every meeting. But uh, it, th that, that invitation goes out to about 50 to 75 people every time that there's a meeting. And so that's one of the ways to keep up, is just to, uh, just to include as many people as possible. And then you always have to make sure that you have that core group of folks that, uh, that understands where they're going, understands the vision of what needs to be done, and then is, then is willing to do the work to get there. So, you know, like, like everything with volunteers, 90% uh, of the work gets done by about 10% of the folks. So, and um, if, you, if you find it different than that, then you're, you're in a pretty lucky space. Anything else? Any other questions? Ken, I have to step out, but if you want to share our contact information on that last slide, yep, if, if anybody can. has any questions, um, please reach out. I also did share in the chat the link to that um, Play, Play, and Preserve website uh, for reference also. So Very good. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Mary. You might have covered this, and I'm, I apologize if I missed it. So with the increase in permits, do you know what those users were doing? Was it partying? Was it fishing? Was it camping? Do you, yes. do you have any demographics? <laughs> All of the above? Yeah, it was, yeah I, I mean, what you have to understand is that, is, is that uh, because Lake McConaughey was such a uh, value for folks from Colorado, um, people would, I mean, th there would be, thousands of people just trying to camp on the beach and things like that and it just, it just became untenable i mean you couldn't do it and so and so yeah so the folks that wanted to fish or wanted to camp and things like that were getting pushed out by the partiers and and so it just and and you know as as people get there on the beach fortunately though <laughs> and i don't mean to joke about this but fortunately though there's uh, there's no alcohol allowed on the shores of lake mcconaughey <laughs> so um so we didn't have to worry about that yeah right um but, but the, you know, anytime you get a bunch of people in a confined area and you, you, end up, you can end up with issues. I mean, and if you've got 50,000 people um, on the beaches of Lake McConaughey over a big weekend, um, no matter what, you're going to have some issues. And if you, if you allow alcohol and other, other substances to get involved in that, you're going to have more issues. So um, reducing those numbers was essential. To, uh, to us getting to where we needed to be and to, and to be able to set a baseline and to be able to know that, uh, okay, we can handle that. Can we grow from here? Good afternoon, Ken. Jeff, how are you? Hey, just fine. You might mention uh, the difference between uh, law enforcement incidents during the first year of the reservation system as compared to the past? Sure. Yeah, and, and I touched on that a little bit, but, you know, one of the things in the, in the past, I mean, law enforcement, we had, we had representatives from State Patrol, representatives from Game and Parks, representatives from our local Keith County Sheriff and Ogallala Police Department. Uh, that would, and we even had a couple federal um, uh, Game and Parks uh, f folks that came out to help uh, patrol on some of those big weekends. And... In the past, there would be anything from assaults to um, uh, attempted murders, firearms, I mean, uh, drug cases, I mean, you name it, it was going on out there. Uh, human trafficking, all sorts of things were happening out there. And uh, there just was no way for anybody to actually uh, patrol the whole thing because there were just so many people. So basically, law enforcement was in a triage mode. Um, once the reservation system came into place and once, uh, once the numbers were, um, were uh, truncated greatly, I believe, 
Um, that, that completely changed. And, and like I said before, uh, law enforcement, when we talked to them after those first few weekends, they were like, you know, it's a completely different world. We're, we're, we're able to come up to folks and talk to them and, you know, get them to understand, you know, everybody's, you know, people don't mind the law enforcement being there and, and they're actually seeing them. And they, they said, you know, we're, we're actually writing tickets for what you would hope to be writing tickets for at a state park fishing violations and, you know, no licenses or no stickers and things like that. The kind of stuff that, you know, you don't have to put people in cuffs for. And so they were extremely happy about that. And I think that's one of the main things that this reservation system has done for us, is it's given us the ability to get a handle on that and, uh, and give everybody out there a, uh, you know, a chance to have a, a good time. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. So one... I'll take the last question, uh -huh. if uh, just before we adjourn, how many folks here have been to Lake McConaughey or Lake Ogallala before? Yeah, so you got a pretty, pretty yeah. good crap. There we go. <laughs> here. Well, we're all beach bums then, right? Yeah. <laughs> so with that, let's thank our speakers for, for being here today. Thank you.